Hey guys, uh, welcome to our another episode of 360 Scale Podcast. And today we have um, our Kenny's co-founder, No, and uh, we are going to cover uh, the Q4 and Black Friday and overall Christmas shopping uh, preparation. Uh, we have talked about projections, planning, uh, time frame, framework, on uh, how iOS updates uh, changed the game uh, in terms of Q4. And uh, also at the end of this podcast, um, we are going to give you out uh, the secret um, secret value. And, uh, and yeah, have you listening and uh, make sure you subscribe, like, and share with your friends. Welcome to 360 Scale, a podcast for A-level entrepreneurs looking to scale their business beyond seven figures. Learn from those that have actually made it in the world of e-commerce with actionable steps you can apply right now. I don't know. Uh, how you are spending your days before the Q4 and the Black Friday? Hmm preparing i mean uh simple as that as we are shooting right now the podcast it is the middle of the september so it's like the great season of preparing for the black friday and getting back on track with the purchasing behavior from the customers since we are kind of we ended the summer the summer holiday season is over and now it's all about the quarter four and converting on the november so basically yeah it's all it's all about the preparation uh testing out the things before the black month and that's about it okay and how many clients you have on your head that you are overlooking yeah i mean i'm strategist for one of the accounts uh since still my kind of position in the in, in the agency is being one of the co-founders who's responsible overall for the performance of the all the clients that we are kind of delivering them the full stack performance package which means that we are kind of the c like the marketing team inside their uh, team and we're running all the performance uh from the media buying to the influencers marketing creatives websites and so on and so on so kind of i'm overlooking every account that we're managing right now because um i'm managing the strategies of our team and um and yeah and i need to make sure that we kind of put as much effort as we can and deliver the best results uh, as possible for our clients. Uh, uh, and yeah, I need to manage the strategies. I see the POV from all the clients. I'm seeing what kind of strategies our e-commerce leads are making for, for those projects. Okay, so you definitely have some stuff to cover. So let's jump on uh, planning and uh, overall start of, of uh, of the overall strategy and uh yeah just uh give as much value as much uh, as many extra actionable steps as you can and uh, let's start from from there so h- how you're handling planning uh how you are projecting your numbers and overall from where you're starting to mm-hmm. prepare mm-hmm. okay great question i mean that's this is the most important part i believe so so um if we take all the time that we have in a year the planning and the projection the forecasting of the quarter four especially the black friday begins somewhere in in the middle or in the end of the summer and you most probably know that the month of august is a really slow month for majority of the e-commerces i mean a lot of people are taking off for the holidays they are kind of just spending the last bit of uh, summertime that they have and um, and they like overall the purchasing behavior is, is slower so you have only like I mean two options to do either you just go with the flow and you kind of minimize the efforts into the project because overall the behavior is slow down and there's a second option you start the plan I mean uh, and in the August uh, I mean you should start like what we do from our side we should start to communicate with the client because we're managing clients and we're managing expectations of the e-commerce owners because they also need to uh, book and orders to for um, manufacturing the product. I mean, they need to plan the stock, which is the stock, stock is definitely important. Yeah, the stock like in the August, 
I think you are thinking about the stock and how much of the units you'll be having during the quarter four. And uh, is it possible for you to like sold out everything or maybe the customer is capable of doing a lot of units, but you are at the stage of the, you are not kind of seeing such a mass scale. I mean, for example, I mean, if you're doing uh, overall averagely about, I don't know, 30K and you're like a small fish in the water, then I don't think that you should aim to hit 1 million during November. I mean, the number will be lower because still you do not have data and like this is still possible, but I think you shouldn't do it because if you are doing just 30K, it means that you are all, like all the systems from the fulfillment center, from the customer service are not capable of uh, to kind of handle yeah. such a big growth. Yeah. Because like every every case is different, you know, like uh, yeah, yeah, simply so. can't take uh, all the strategy that we are just going to talk about and implement if you are, I don't know, 2 million monthly revenue brand. Yeah, yeah. So totally. the game is different. Yeah, so I mean, I'll kind of, for, for each project the case is different but the idea behind it is kind of the same so yeah so in the august basically what we what we do is uh, like in the mid august in the in the beginning of the august start to think about the and communicate with the client about the stock level so we are trying first of all to get okay still owners planning on themselves so what is the approximate number that you gonna prepare for the quarter four uh, of the stock levels and we kind of start to forecast the revenue and other KPIs such as ROI. So what we do is like we usually take the data if it's uh, if it's available. We usually take the data from the uh, past year's results, uh, and we kind of try to forecast the uh, this Black Friday's uh, this upcoming Black Friday's um, potential outcome. And what we usually do is uh, that maybe especially during the 2021 like what we've seen from the already being in that, like already after the August, when we planned uh, planned the stuff, planned the quarter four with the clients that the cogs went up. So it means that offers, it may be that offer is not, uh, the last year's offer that worked as, for example, really well, is not suitable for this year's because the gross profit margin will be like, will be dropped drastically. So mm -hmm. you need to like look at the cogs, especially also look at the shipping cost, uh, because I know that many like major uh, delivery companies they kind of increase the prices of of the shipping during the product. So, uh, and also like if you are outsourcing the fulfillment to the other fulfillment center, they are also increasing the pickup prices. And then China and then yeah, in China the with the air air packaging, uh, they also increase because they know that. I mean, they will be so desperate to buy as much like stock from you because they, they know that it's a Black Friday. So China is also like kind of, uh, they are smart in that kind of way. Because, like everybody's doing business during the Black Friday. So you, you need to expect increasing um, prices into the cost. And then we kind of have this kind of nominal profit calculation table where we just put updated COGS. We, then we come up with the offers. And um, in that table, I mean, I won't uh, acknowledge you a lot. We, this is the, like internal tool, but what we're doing is that we are making uh, different scenarios for different offers and kind of forecasting the deal distributions. For example, you have, I don't know, quantity discounts. Yeah, so the, there will be different deal distribution. Like there will be, I don't know, 30% that people are buying only two items or three. And I mean, it really depends because if like, customer buys more items, then the cogs of the fulfillment increases and all the details very matters. And then we kind of make the projections for the seller offers and we see at the numbers and we see at the numbers, which is the most reliable regard the gross profit margin, because yeah, people want to make a lot of money, especially e-commerce owners for, for, I know there are owners that they do 70% of the revenue, yearly revenue during the quarter four. Yeah. There Definitely. are own owners that are doing on around 30, 40. The, still, each each project is different, but there's like a lot of a lot of planning in there. So yeah, after that we come up with the offer. A lot of communication with the client coming up with the uh, with the offer. There are cases where basically clients kind of have some kind of policies like regards the brand imaging. Yeah. I mean, they do not want to go very aggressive on the offers because it is a kind of um, uh, declining their brand reputation, I could say. Uh, 
something. Yeah, but I believe it's uh, a matter of expectations and how, yeah. how you're yeah. handling yeah. it. Yeah, it's the matter of expectations. So talking about this, I mean, for all the e-commerce owners, uh, if you are not a very, very big brand and brand is, I don't know, 2 million revenue a, a, a month. I mean, you're when, when you're doing around 10 million year revenue plus, then you are a brand. I mean, you will most probably could be recognized in the markets that you're mainly selling. And then you can invest a lot of money into branding. But, but when you are like the in the middle class where you are doing, I don't know, around million, three million revenue a year, then you should use the Black Friday as an opportunity to bring a lot of new people. Gain data. Gain like data. So. Yeah, I mean, especially for the health, beauty products, where the returning customer rate is bigger, um, around like 40, 50% or even more they need to go aggressive as they can because if they gonna like scale the shit out of black friday and as for example they will increase their customer list i know by even by 10 percent if the current list is already big then they will see the like a huge growth in the overall year revenue because the lifetime value exists. I mean, and there's like a lot of returning customers. And at the same time, like the main, like what, like a lot of business owners, what they have is that, uh, like going with the huge offers, the, this is damaging our brand image. We do not want to uh, make people buy products just because of the offer. I mean, and yes and no, but during Black Friday, I think that rule doesn't exist because Everybody is launching Black Friday. Yeah, Apple. Can, I mean, Apple can uh, can do what they want. They cannot. But Apple is Apple. I mean, yesterday, uh, yesterday they had a live yeah. show. Yeah, I mean, like the for the Black Friday, what they're doing the product launch because this is like a super nice, like major event for the all Apple fans. But then, yeah, I mean, they have the like they have the power of not giving ever anything for the people. But when you're not Apple, and like, I mean. 99.99 percent of us is not apple yeah you should give an aggressive offer to gain for the future because i mean maybe you are not so profitable during the black friday but it's all about the future and the lifetime value yeah your mind just should be like you know just uh collecting uh, rewards in the long mm -hmm. run after the black Friday. yeah exactly so yeah so we kind of finalize finalize the communication regards the offer and we come up with the either one option uh, e or either several options. So when we do came up with the one option is basically when we have a lot of historical data. I mean, if we have the project where we have a lot of, we already like we already been in a lot of Black Fridays and we kind of already know what kind of offers um, do work. I mean, I'm talking about the core offers because there's a lot of extra bits later on that I will speak about, but um, you just kind of yeah so you kind of finalize the communication regarding the offer you get the agreement um uh, what what are you planning to run to black friday and then in the september like in the start of the september you could have a test run which is the labor day weekend and um, the point here is that what is the difference between running a simple flash sale simple uh, just a simple sale uh, in comparison with the Black Friday, that during like the like history, people are kind of familiar already with that event, and they know that a lot of brands will, especially in America. I mean, especially in America, and they know that a lot of brands will give them special offers, deals, just to kind of um, broad. I mean, just to purchase something. Yeah. They Espe save their checks uh, two two months before for yeah. that weekend. Yeah, yeah, and also back in school, it's like Labor Day sale is correlated with the back in school because a lot of people, uh, parents, older people, are just buying some stuff for for their uh, for their children's grandchildren, and so on and so forth. So you could have a test run. So what we do is we usually prepare something from like we do not push. Uh, as much effort as we do in the Black Friday, because our main goal is just to see if if that offer uh, collects traction from the our audience. So yeah, so we do very familiar funnels. We hype it up. We like we hire people. We 
um, generate VAP lists, uh, do, uh, via email marketing, SMS marketing. We also uh, kind of uh, do a uh, kind of warm up the hour warm. Like we do a bit of a pre-media buying in the end of the August just to g generate a lot of uh, audience into our warm audience because still during the weekend, a lot of advertisers uh, scale up their budgets. So CPMs are a bit higher than usual. And yeah, and then we just blast out the campaigns and we see we like we're looking into the results. And usually, um, as most of the times, like we are successful uh, because, um, as I said, you need to test out our your core offer on the familiar time frame, which is, I mean, Labor Day and Black, um, Black Day is they have uh, like similarities regards the hype because people are hype about buying the stuff, any kind of stuff. Yeah, and that then weekend. you can uh, reuse that audience later on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, totally. It, it, especially if you are kind of bringing the new customers into your into your funnel. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, so Labor Day weekend. This is our this is the test run of ours. Also, there is a situation where you have, I know you agreed on the several offers and you need to decide whenever you want to buy. So in this case, uh, what we usually do is we generate, like we start even earlier to generate the VAP list. Uh, how to do that? You can do the giveaway campaigns. You can do just like uh, top of the funnel, simply just inviting them to the VAP list to join, uh, to join the list and get the... Uh, benefits from it, special offers and etc. from them earlier just to f make them feel the VAP uh, and so on and so forth. We also like use our current email campaign to collect, uh, email list to collect from the email list uh, people to the VAP list. So we yeah. kind of, and what we do is just test it out by 50-50 AB test with that VAP list. Which offer gets the more traction? And then when we test it out, we usually get the answer. Which one gets the more traction? Is it a site-wide sale? Is it a buy one, get one? Or something like that. So it's like a test run. Like Labor Day weekend is a test run from the Black Friday because we have the like similar uh, environment for the Black Friday. And from that, we kind of we kind of confirm on the offer and then we bootstrap, like kick off to the other things that we need to prepare. Okay, and now maybe let's summarize and then in each step just give some, some actionable steps. So at, as an example, you need a proper planning. Uh, so we have a plan. Uh, what would be the actionable steps that our listeners can take? Let's say, I don't know how to deal with expectations of the client. Maybe you already had some, some troubles and you know the exact solution that works. Uh, maybe you have uh, some kind of a solution for in terms of uh, offer planning uh, that you also solved and our uh, listeners uh, can just take that out. So about the planning, I mean, the numbers do the talking. So planning should be involved numbers, not random hypothetical uh, promises for the client. I mean, you should, what, what, what I did and what we did is we take the table we make the table from them to see what the are what's the possibility to gain in revenue, what's the possibility uh, in the ROI's perspective, and so on and so forth. And when you have numbers, it's very easy to kind of communicate regards that. Of course, you have to like, I mean, um, give them expect, like expectation that this is just a forecasting, and you cannot yeah. be, like get on the exact same numbers. There will be like a discrepancy in that, but. Uh, I mean, just forecasting with the numbers, communicating with the client, and that's it. Talking about the offer, you shouldn't be uh, spending a lot of time to brainstorm about something big of an offer because offers are, I mean, people are kind of, there are different type of offers that is, they are most common and they really are kind of attached to them. So you do not need to come up with something crazy. I mean, from Lime Chain, you do not yeah. you do not need to make bicycle once again. Yeah, you just take your target audience. You compare different offers. If you are in US, maybe those you know quantity offers would yeah. work. If you're yeah. in Europe, maybe I don't know store wide sales. Yeah. So usually about the offers, it's very simple. So there are site wide blank sales where you just kind of everything is discounted automatically without the code, and there are uh, kind of 
BOGOs, buy one, get one free, you can buy two, get two free. They're also working, it really depends on the product that you're having. Uh, and also there are complex offers. I mean, you can do the site wide, and if you are having a, like a huge assortment, then you can implement also quantity discounts. I mean, there's a simple site-wide sale of 20% off, but if you buy three items, you get 25, but if I buy four, you yeah. get 30. And when the, you like Americans from the people from the USA, they like uh, the consumption levels are way different than Europe and they like kind of interested in buying yeah. a lot of, a lot of uh, stuff regards quantity. And even if you do not do quantity discounts, we tend to see the increases in the in the AOV by ten by from ten to thirty percent because uh, basically people when when they have the simply site wide sale, their brain works in that way. Okay, so I, if I have the sale, I can kind of take this chance and buy even more. So e- maybe you, you don't even need you don't even need the quantity kind of like additional quantity rewards. Like I believe the best part is just you know just take out. Uh, different types of offers like store wide, maybe bogos and all that. Test as many as you can before Black Week, Black Friday, and Cyber Monday, and the Christmas shopping and all that. And then, yeah, just uh, run the one that works for you. Yeah, yeah. And a I'm secret pre lander, maybe if you don't want to, you know. Yeah, yeah. Your yeah, website. I mean, but there are like a lot to talk on, and I think we're gonna talk later on, but. Uh, also, I mean, pre-landers, creatives, and etc. I mean, especially with the pre-landers, if you're testing the offers on the pre-landers or just the separate landing pages, uh, sales pages that are made for that offer, just a simple quick tip, make them as simple as you can without a, without many different u- u- user um, experience tips and tricks because it usually needs to be very simple. I mean... Huge hero banner with the offer, products. Yeah. And uh, you don't want to, to have that impact of... Yeah, uh, exactly. Another, another it, it make, it, make it as simple as possible and do not overthink regards the design or something yeah. if you're testing out the offer. So that's also one of the tips, but we're going to talk about that even like later on e- even more. So just to summarize, you need to proper um, plan everything. Plan out, write down, calculate. It's... Mm, more or less data game. Uh, then you need to forecast uh, the stock numbers. If you won't have the stock, you won't have a possibility to fully uh, launch that plan that you came up with. And then um, overall plan your operations, shippings and all that. And of course, uh, the strong team in place. So yeah, the, the strong, I mean, about the team, team has to be hungry. And uh, for team, Black Friday should be as a, like as a as a special event as in our team black friday is all about the hype a, a lot of like every employee is very hyped about it incentives incentives yeah and uh, of course there's there are incentives in place but most importantly they are like pumped about the idea of generating a lot and succeeding among other competitors that are kind of in the competition so so yeah team is also but in candy for scale we have a great team, so yeah. <laughs> and for Black Friday, you just need those who are playing full time. When we are comparing to football, yeah, I mean the there are times then you, when you need to work on night, and they work it because they know that the outcome of it will be ten x. Definitely. Okay. In your case, from your experience, from the clients that you're overlooking, you mentioned uh, around nine. So, in terms of the workflow, how it looks. Uh, how it feels and uh, how you are implementing everything. So, I mean, start with maybe I would just the disclaimer that, I mean, it's all about the aggressiveness in the media buying, like your output in the, like how aggressive you'll be in the media buying. Um, it, uh, it ends up on how rewarding it will be. And um, just being to you with, with you just straightforward in like me- media buying during the, black friday period is super challenging uh and just from the just the simple thing such as high cpms and uh, like because not only us we are like not only us are running um black friday campaigns for the for the e-commerce and everybody's doing that so everybody when everybody's doing that your cpms increases by 2x in the top of the funnel 
than usual. So the core thing behind that is just to start early. So as I told you in the first part of the podcast that we are kind of having a test run during the uh, during the Labor Day weekend, then we kind of start to execute. Talking about the, about the theory, uh, so you could get the idea behind it that during the Black Friday, CPMs usually increase on top of the funnel from 2 to 4x, depending on the niche that you are in. But there's like a bit uh, different part, which is the warm audience. And in the warm audience, the CPMs do not increase as drastically, uh, like uh, as much as in the top of the funnel. Yeah. They increase only by 10 to 30 percent. And they, there are cases and there are niche niches that um, the CPMs even stick to be the same. So starting early, uh, what the first thing we do, we run usual creators as like usual funnels, not not anything, not about the sales. And we're starting to do that somewhere in the middle of the September and the late September till the late uh, October. And what we do, we just start to increase our ad accounts budget. Um, what because KPI is you aiming for? It really depends on the client and the project. I mean, if that project is capable on going uh, to go on break even for 30 to 40 days straightforward, then yes, then we are going on the break even. If they are capable of and their cash flow is all right. If not, then we kind of still need to think about the health of the project and uh, and just to kind of allocate the budget that kind of way that we acquire a lot of uh, acquire a lot of people to the top of the funnel. But at the same time, we kind of generate like generate profit. So uh, profit may be lower, but um, but we still generate profit. So it's still it depends on the case on the project. But if it's possible, it's very good to go on break even uh, because you a, you do not lose money when you are break even, and b most probably you're gonna like have twice of acquisitions in the top of the funnel i mean talking about the acquisitions i mean not only purchases yeah, yeah. i mean to overall people in the funnel yeah so overall you're just preparing yourself to collect that reward of q4 yeah 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 we do kind of this is called the pre-media buying when you basically increase the budget of the uh, of your ad account and you're buying data from facebook during uh, the period of time which is still not as competitive as November. And um, moving on from that point, um, like... But like, look, like if we already increasing our budget, maybe there are some points that you can uh, benefit from. I don't know, maybe some kind of a, uh, sort of ways you can put uh, after purchase uh, and start getting more data on your target audience. Maybe, I don't know, because you're already spending more. So maybe they're just like, you know, grow hacks you could use with the pre-media buying you are kind of what not kind of but what we do is we test everything like during that period we test everything from the november so we could start from the website part so what we do we try to test every section of our product uh product page or landing page uh to try just to a b test every section and we kind of do that not from the not from the late September. We kind of do that from the August, because for for the A/B test, depending on the traffic you like of the amount of traffic that you are usually having, uh, it takes time. I mean, if you have a lot of traffic, then may, you may be uh, are, are capable of completing it in one week. But in our cases, what we see the a usual uh, time frame for completing the A-B test uh, for the landing pages is uh, two to three weeks. So we kind of do that already from the August. Uh, just maybe we do more aggressively regards the A-B test uh, just in the late September and the October itself. And uh, later on, uh, talking about the A-B test, so yeah, we A-B test sections, we A-B test copies, um, if there is a possibility, uh, may, we may even uh, test the design of the website, but not like not very commonly. I mean, it really depends on the project because there are cases where, as an example, 
we onboarded uh, we onboarded the new client uh, a, a week ago and uh, the website the design of the website um it's not very attractive i mean and it can be improved a lot because we have the um uh ui ux specialists in our team we have the coder in our team so we yeah. can re- like we can do very quickly yeah so basically as you're already doing pre media buying then it's uh it makes sense to to change those things when you have more traffic then you simply have that safe bet because like uh in case uh, it's not working you're not spending so much time on it and you can just rechange get back to the old one yeah but it's it's still you need to kind of what we do we usually really look at the once again in that kpi how much of the traffic we are generating if for yeah. example you're generating around a thousand traffic a day which is a very low number then we usually uh we could change the whole design of the website and it wouldn't affect our performance really well in the, like in the november the october but if we are generating i don't know i won't, could start from the 5k to more uh, then it gets a bit tricky because in that point you're kind of putting your project at risk that it even could go below the break even because it's the, it's the simple um like purchasing behavior because there's a lot of warm audience there's a lot of repeatable i mean returning returning sessions yeah. and when they see the way different design they kind of got scared because still people remember by the eye so uh by looking it, into it so they got they get scared and they just basically bounce off the website and they never come back but if the traffic uh, number that you are usually kind of generating daily isn't big then you are you are able to make this um and uh, make this change but as i said it's not the most prioritized thing the design of it because uh usually um uh, it's all about the conversion principles in your website. Uh, I mean, conversion principles, the user experience from the purchasing side to make it as simple as possible. Try to make the experience as less clickable as possible. I mean, few clicks away from the making a purchase. Yeah, that should be your that should be your priority. Okay, so like, uh, let's say uh, we do pre media buying, uh, we test out our website, and what else? Well, what you creatives. are also creatives, yeah. Creatives. So creatives is, I mean, uh, creative is really also important. So with creatives, what we do, I mean, there uh, there aren't a lot types of creatives. I mean, first of all, we have videos and static designs, uh, static creatives. So, so that's the first difference, and then we can kind of so the uh, static creatives are uh, separated to gifs. GIFs, images, simple images, designs, and that's about carousels, and that's about it. Videos are kind of separated to BuzzFeed type of video, UGC video, lifestyle videos, product show-offs, unboxing, uh, spokesperson videos. So those are like different types of videos. Of course, there can be like, there's a lot of creativity in in those types. You can kind of put two types into one video and make a mashup but it's all about the creativity and testing so just to make for you to understand it easier we usually create uh depending on the project and from the data that we have from quarter one quarter two and quarter three we take the most um the like the most performing type of videos type of creative type of designs and then what we do I'll talk about, I'll speak about this in example. So, for example, we have, we know that uh, behind this project, the best performing videos are UGC, lifestyle videos, and unboxings. There are like simply three types of videos that are always performing, and other types, uh, other types of videos usually I know uh, are not performing so well. So, what we do, we start to prepare the core elements for those videos so we make a shoot we kind of make those just make those videos but we do not put any headlines banners regards the uh, black friday yeah, so, so overall the concept only. yeah and the 
goal here is to kind of test out the core like the core crate without anything because we saw uh like what we did last year and that was mistaken this year we have like uh, already seen the success that for example if you make creative straightforward yeah i mean 10 different lifestyle videos just with the headline uh of black friday and offer uh, and other elements of the black friday uh it could be effects or something and you just put them launch them just straight forward in the november then we see that okay from those 10 videos only from two to four only performs and they're generating like they're the Facebook allocates the majority of ad spend for them. Yeah. But for other videos, they are still getting the ad spend, but they are unprofitable. So we are burning money. So we are kind of, by doing this, we're lowering the possibilities of risking our money, uh, our or clients' money. We did this the same test during the Labor Day weekend. After, I mean, in the, mid, uh, in the middle of the August, we tested out 10, 10 lifestyle videos for, for our, uh, of the product. And we got four winners and we made those winners then with the Labor Day weekend sale. And guess what? Every creative was performing super well. And it it is just simple as that. You need to create, a, and then we kind of generated a, a massive row. I mean, from six to eight X row I just on a weekend. And, uh, and yeah, I mean. You are just not reinventing the wheel. Nope. I mean, there's no remedy. I mean, it's all about the testing. It's all about the testing and getting the answers and uh, putting dots in the place. But like testing on the concepts that already work. Yeah. And uh, you test out everything, not only videos, same thing goes to the designs and same goes to the headlines, same goes to the uh, copies. With what we did with the Labor Day weekend, we tested out what kind of positioning and call to action of the special offer is best in the videos. As an example, simple headline in the top of the video, or is it, I don't headline on the, in the middle of the video with the effects. Also, we tested the very simple one. Also, we tested that in the, since the video, uh, video's length was around 15 seconds. So we just tested out in the end of the video and we saw the result that basically the sticky one right like you just have yeah the yeah, yeah the sticky one like the st sticky headline on top of the video uh, is working the best and it's kind of very understandable because a lot of content overall in social media and facebook is i mean if you are see if you're seeing those bus type videos yeah uh, though like those are using a lot of sticky like sticky banners uh, in on top of the video uh, and uh, people are used to kind of hook on them so we noticed that that it's we once again will not be reinventing the wheel during the black friday we're just gonna use that concept that we tested we know exactly on data and by doing this what we do we generate highest row okay yeah and uh okay so you have the website you have the creative part in place and uh, what's next what's next is emails and uh emails 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 so uh, about testing so you should already know among like along the year because um in our email department and we do a lot of a b testing and a b testing i mean it's just part of the game in the emails and it's usually comes down to headlines uh, subheader text and we already know tips and tricks uh, along the we already kind of get the answers along the year regards what kind of uh, headlines headers subheaders uh, works the best to get people's attention so this should be done if the emails are done properly we uh, by the way when like we are born the clients um people sometimes do not this is a bit of off topic but people people sometimes do not know how much of the value emails brings and uh, to be honest it's one of our we focus a lot on the emails basically and emails are usually generating at least 30 percent of the revenue uh, directly working together with Facebook and email gen and so on. So yeah. just if you're going to the Black Friday, and I'm just going to talk about it later a bit, emails, I believe, is the most profitable and the most important part of the of the game. And there are several reasons. The CPMs 
such as we have in Facebook are non-existent. We have basically an email list, but what we need is just the emails itself. So we need to yeah. kind of broader our email list. And then it comes to the point what we do in the, what we start doing in the middle, late October is basically generating cheap email addresses. Also telephone numbers for the SMS marketing. But it's all about that. Uh, I mean, don't get it wrong. You don't need uh, email addresses from, from China or something. Still needs to be your target audience. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So there, are, I, I like to say, I like to call them just basically hype campaigns, where we promote like there are separate ways. So one of the way what we were doing is giveaway campaigns, just basically giving away our products in exchange of leaving their email addresses and uh, just giving them a chance just to kind of um, win the product. You can also do that with the, uh, we also do with collaborating with the influencer. What influencer gets the product, he launches the giveaway campaign on his profile and, it, and, it, and he is doing that organically. But in order to compete in that giveaway, you need to leave the email address. <laughs> And uh, w what I also like to do, just a simple inv invitation um, into the VAP list, simple static creative, straightforward, enter the, um, enter the VAP list and... Um, through Facebook, right? Yeah, for Facebook, enter the VAP list and uh, be the first uh, to unlock even better discounts. And we're not doing lying. It, uh, you're doing it on like uh, top of the funnel or it's more like uh, middle and bottom of the funnel game? We do it everywhere. I mean, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. Uh, maybe the budget for the middle of the funnel isn't very big. Uh, what's the frequency number you're aiming for? For that type of thing when it comes to collecting emails? Collecting, it's about four. It's about okay. four. I mean, like, there are cases like where we kind of, in the remarketing, we uh, do frequency way higher. Just bo like kind of try to constantly be on their feeds but in this case it's around four and in top of the funnel uh with the specific target like audiences and mo most of the times it's their niche audiences not very big small audiences because if you will be running broad collecting like emails via just joining the vip list or giveaway then you could kind of expect to get a lot of trash emails that do not convert in the end of the day, just because they just kind of left the email for for fun, and um, and yeah, so that 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 is about it. What you are giving out, let's say, giveaway is pretty clear. But what about VAP list? What's the strategy behind building the offer for VAP list? Yeah, so um, VAP list means a very important person. Okay. <laughs> so I mean. That, so that's what we're doing for them is giving them ben more like beneficial and more advanced and just to say it simpler, better offers than we're going to do, give them during the Black Friday. So it usually is an extra 5 or 10% uh, discount uh, made on the separate landing page made just for them. And it is very important to make them feel respectable that they really they do not get scammed they really get got the extra discount there uh, make the whole website about vp 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 and they just kind of create the scarcity that ev like there's like there are a lot of vps and um or just like those people and the there's like limited stock limited time for them and so basically you're hyping up them yeah, as I said, I like to call them hype campaigns because it's all about the hype. So we covered creatives, we covered emails, website and all that. And uh, what's the other step? Yeah, besides emails, there are SMS. So you should also think about um, basically uh, find the ways to generate uh, to kind of broader your telephone number list. Uh, if you're your main market is USA, it's pretty much very simple. In the Europe, there are GDPR policies and, and so on. So with our clients, the major main markets and main market is usually USA. So it's kind of for us easier to do that. And also you could uh, implement, um, it really depends on the budget that your client is doing. Influencers, 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 influencers. So with the influencers, 
there are two options. So dark posting. So you could arrange the creatives uh, to make special, like especially for the November that they are kind of talking about the offer and then kind of launch those ads via their pro using their profile. And uh, it could also be very beneficial because it gives the credibility for the viewer just to kind of, you know, I mean, oh my God, someone is advertising from their own account. It is not that brand that is advertising and you're able to kind of generate additional um, revenue with, I guess, uh, lower cost per acquisition. The second option regards the influencers marketing, if you are doing it, it, it depends on if you are doing and if you are already into the macro influencers, then is just to take the best macro influencers that performs the best for you and uh, arrange the promotions for the black week, I could say, because the black in the black week, you'll have the biggest offers, uh, the biggest offer during the whole period. If it's possible for client to pay for those promotions, then you should most definitely go with that. Yeah. Also, I, I had some strategies like that. You should take influencers that overlaps between each other. It creates that uh, hype. Uh, yeah. Also, yeah. don't get too too crazy about the budget because usually influencers they are just like overcharging through. Yeah, um, and especially they will know that this is the Black Friday and yeah, they yeah. kind of can overcharge it. But as I said, it really depends. Like influence, it first of all it depends on the budget that your client has, and maybe if um, the client isn't very big regards the budget, then I believe it should be allocated to the media buying more. But if the client uh, is VC funded or is he yeah VC funded or just overall he has different. Um, selling channels. I'm, if he is successful in Amazon, if he is successful, I don't know retail. O o retail overall, then you should you should definitely go into that. And um, and yeah, and it also depends about the fees and the promotion like promotion fees from the influencers. It really depends if you are already doing that. And if you are already doing that, and you have the list of the already successful promotions from the influencers. It depends on the relationship with that influencer, how many yeah. posts he has already done for that brand and uh, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, it's all about the communication regards the fees. Um, if you are new, then it gets a bit tricky then because usually the fresh promotions, if you haven't had any relationship with potential uh, macro influencer that you are kind of interested in, then the fees will normally will be bigger. Yeah, like in this case, I would just recommend you to calculate a CPM based on story views. Yeah. And then just take uh, the simple story. If it works, then you can uh, take another one. Yeah, if yeah, it also yeah. works, then just buy the bundle for the Q4. Yeah, yeah. But with the influencers, it's kind of... Well, once again, I'll get back to... The, it really depends on the budget because... Uh, it gets tricky with the saturation. Uh, I mean, and it gets tricky where uh, what that influencer is usually posting. The best case scenario would be that that influencer is just big from himself and he celebrity. Do, yeah, celebrity. But the number of the promotions that he's doing is not big, because yeah, otherwise, definitely. if he, for example, he has a lot of contracts with different uh, brands then it gets risky because you do not control uh, other promotions that he'll gonna post maybe for example he he he'll gonna he or she will post uh, i don't know five promotions that same day in so the same niche in the same niche that would be even crazier then you most probably are doomed to um, just doomed to fail yeah. but uh, but yeah but it's with the influencers it's tricky i mean it really depends on your current crm of the influencers with your current relationship with the influencers but if you have it you have to like you you can basically make the value from it yeah like you you can uh put all those uh cheats in place you know like uh measuring the cpms uh, overall just scraping the uh, the profile and yeah. all that but you still i would say have at least uh 30 percent higher uh risk than media buying the influencers maybe even more yeah 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 but as i said it depends on the list also if the project it's about um they have a high lifetime value, high percentage of the returning customer rates. 
uh, and it's maybe that the audience is a bit older. Uh, the thing is you could do is just postcards. Uh, I mean, yeah. with the postcards, there's like, they are super underrated. It's like an old school direct to consumer marketing, but it like during the Black Friday, it works. So as an example, we have one project that is kind of the target audience is 45 plus, yeah, 45 plus. The returning customer rate is 50% because the project runs on one times plus subscription. Like there's yeah. like possibilities. We definitely gonna be sending them for a postcard because do, after doing a little bit of research on what kind of, um, in what from what kind of cities, cities um, those customers are, they're not from the, coast cities of the America, they are like a bit in the middle of the America, like Texas, um, Texas, Nevada, Arizona. So most of the times those customers have their own, own house and they are checking the mailbox very often. And so you are kind of having a higher chances of basically converting it. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, so what we do, what you do is, for example, you take the um, list of uh, most returning customers. You take their like, take their addresses, and then, 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 just basically send them a postcard with the very, very VAP offer, which means like the make them special, basically. No brainer. No brainer. Yeah, make them special, and you're gonna see I don't know six thousand percentage increase, like uh, return, bro. Why? And also, if you have some time. You have resources like uh, most important ones people and uh second important time then you could also try out tiktok influencers just to aim for that viral content you know yeah yeah and as many free products as you can for those micro influencers yeah. um do a detail brief um to aim for for that uh for you page and just uh yeah tiktok is definitely underrated yeah tiktok uh, tiktok too tiktok is still growing i mean i do not have a lot of experiments uh, experience there but uh, if we take the fundamentals of the uh, of the influencers marketing uh, from the instagram then you could kind of implement the same fundamentals into tiktok and see all to return about the tiktok ads uh, yeah we test them but we won't be putting any effort this Bla this black friday yet next black friday maybe i hope so i hope so it's because still unstable yeah it's it's still unstable i mean there are niches there that is stable 100 percent. as an example gaming uh, apps and so on but the niches that we are managing are not uh, very kind of uh suitable the algorithm is still uh untrustable for my side okay so you guys definitely have a lot of things to test out, but what happens uh, when we uh, when the Black Friday is just right around the corner, like one week before the Black Friday? What is happening? What you are doing? <clears throat> I mean, we can take a step to the start of the November. We're doing the pre-media buying on the October. We are collecting yeah. uh, email lists. We're just building the VAP list. We are just collecting emails as cheap as we can. So we kind of aim usually for uh 1.5 to three dollars per email that is perfect i mean that is perfect you are able to generate that um uh, like a new incoming email it is perfect and uh and yeah and then the november comes so what we usually do is if for example you have uh already ongoing offer usually like there are a lot of businesses that they kind of do not even run ads without any offers there must be some kind of offer value offer yeah. uh like a smaller offer in comparison with the black friday so what we do that is we kind of make the ads and call them early black friday sale and that is about the naming and that is about creating the emotion and this is not kind of a dumb thing to because you could say um, you'll kind of people are not dumb they will wait for the black friday no 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 no. i mean we did the research we did the surveys uh, we also um did the research in the internet that a lot of people are start they start buying things in the beginning of the november 
and they buy things for whole month. I mean, they never stops, especially America. They consume a lot, consume a lot. And they even, they stop consuming things. I could say around the middle of the December when they most definitely know that they won't be able to get the yeah, shipment they before the prison. Yeah, they're they, waiting be, for shipment. Before the prison. Because you need to understand that people, A, they are buying for themselves, they are treating themselves. B, they are buying, preparing gifts for the Christmas. And that is really important. Imagine buying things for Christmas for cheaper. That's a no-brainer for yeah. people. I mean, no, I mean, it's an angle uh, that you could try out. Actually, just run ads that I don't know some kind of. A yeah, if the appropriate, if the product is appropriate for gifting, uh, toys, accessories, fashion, fashion health. I mean, everything, almost yeah, everything. Everyone. Yeah, everything. I mean, just use this angle, gifting angle. It works really, really well. Uh, and yeah, the holiday season starts, so we need to consume. And uh, and yeah, so they do it. So we start running ads, which are called early Black Friday ads, early Black Friday sale, basically. Uh, and we with the offer, what we do, we usually, if there's an ongoing offer, we leave it the same. Uh, that like kind of that headline, early Black Friday sale just creates the environment, creates the hype, creates the feeling for people that it is started. I need to buy. Oh my God, Black Friday is already starting. And we still collect emails, VEP list during the beginning of November. Um, we also prepare the uh, additional ads for the Black Friday. We test out the already tested with the early Black Friday. So we even create even more content for the Black Friday on the data that we have from the October, November. And one week before the Black Week. So important tip is to to schedule the ads for the black week 48 hours before uh this is like a technical technical tip but facebook gets a lot of requests for the reviews and facebook is still i mean uh the systems are not perfect so yeah. like the review times are lagging it could you could see that your ads are not being approved for two days and uh, every day is like a suffer for you. I mean, you're suffering from the revenue perspective. Definitely. And yeah, we kind of launched the Monday ads. They are called Black Week Sale. It, it depends on your capabilities. But if you have, I mean, if you have actual limit for the offer, I like kind of could offer you to start with your Black Friday's offer on the Black Week. From the emotional and from the behavior side, people will be buying a lot. You launch the first VAP cam uh, cam campaigns for them, giving uh, the beneficial discount, playing on scarcity. Um, you could be doing special bundles for the VAP list to focus on the AOV because people are not interested in consuming, in, like they're not only interested in paying less, they are interested in getting as much as we can and at the same time pay less. So a by if you are in beauty niche where you are able to create different bundles from the products, you should aim for that because you are increasing AOV and uh, you are just kind of making leverage for yourself in the ROI perspective. And and yeah, so we scale up the budgets. We try to generate during that week till Friday as much as we can. Talking about the VAP list on Thursday makes them feel special. Launch your Black Friday deal. If you have even a better one and you have no limits regarding the offers, launch it to the, on the Thursday, early access. Yeah. So they feel special that they are will be kind of first to the, the stock that is up, like, I mean, available. Yeah, everyone is looking to, to get that early access. Like everyone is trying to find in an iPhone to buy uh, before, before they are going to shops. Or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, and during the Black Friday, two options, you can run ads the, like with the same offer for the black week just rename it like rebrand the ads yeah uh so to say uh and make it a black friday's offer put a lot of scarcity in them and uh, just scale up as much as you can uh, or if you have prepared even bigger offer do that and then just this is like where the magic happens it's and all in about terms the of uh, in terms of let's say budgets what uh what trend you see in the market how how much people are raising their budgets for 
let's say the black week from Monday to Monday. Overall, the budget during November will be higher than usual. Yeah, definitely. But, but uh, if you start from the Monday, you see the traction, you scaled up your, as an example, you scaled up your daily ad spend by twice. So, for example, from five, it, it, it was 5K the week before the black week. Yeah. So you scaled up for, I don't know, for 10K. And you see that you are generating ROI, you are generating revenue, everything is fine then you should basically increase the budget daily and there's no limits there unless that's a quick tip that we kind of solve problems for our clients uh, i mean the cash flow a lot of clients have the cash flow. i mean they do not have such a big of a cash flow they are profitable but still the cash flow and profitability is a bit different and things. limits on the ad account and the limits on the ad account credit the card. limits yeah the credit card the limits on the uh yeah, you said it. Banks, credit cards, and uh, ad account overall. Yeah, if so the quick tip, like uh, for the limits of the ad account, you can use HTTP pool. For the limits of uh, the credit card, you can use uh, Uni. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. so we are kind of the partners of the HTTP pool. Uh, they, and what's good with them is that they basically are the par like sales partners of Facebook. So they're open up they are opening the account for you uh, where the limits if like your financial history of the company is good so there can be no limits there and you just pay them by for the ad spend by invoice in the end of the month uh, with the term of the 14 days of course those things can be different it, it really depends on your uh, credit history uh, but uh, so the credit manager kind of guides you and gives you the best option that they can. And the thing is that they have a bigger and better customer support. So, for example, there are very worst case scenarios. And I like during the Black Friday, um, there are times that Facebook system kind of messes up and disables. they disable ad accounts. And I mean, it can be a heartbroken thing. So, I mean, and a lot of people could lose very, very, lo like a lot of money. So, what you do, yeah, and so you, what you with contact, them? Uh, you contact uh, uh, Mir Nagas <laughs> and uh, we will handle the account for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. LinkedIn. yeah. <laughs> and they have the different, like the more advanced Facebook support that kind of covers all those things like way, way faster. As an example, during the Labor Day, like th this is the situation that I was like, um, I ca currently sp speak about that. During the Labor Day weekend, it was the Thursday, so the week, the day before, scheduled the ad for the Labor Day weekend, and our ad account got disabled. So, like looking at the numbers, uh, during like with the old ad account that was this Facebook, like simple Facebook ad account made on personal account, simple business manager. Uh, I believe we would be like we would resolve that issue in three, four, five days because now Facebook support isn't performing really like great. I mean, it's not performing great. They are mm -hmm. super slow, and um, I mean, uh, Christina for the from the HTTP pool, she does, like she managed to fix that thing during the night, so eight hours, and we didn't lose any money. So yeah, partnership. We have the partnership with the HTTP pool, and if you are struggling with the cash flow. Uh, with the uh, disables from the Facebook, from the ad account, uh, disapproves and so on, with the, like, anything else regards the Facebook blueprint, like, regards the Facebook, we have that. Yeah, and uh, not only the ad account, like, uh, as you mentioned, if you have troubles with your credit card or something, there is uh, Juni, uh, they're also giving out 1% uh, cashback that you could use. And, uh, and yeah, we also have some more things. Uh, so in case you have problems with ad account limits, in case you have problems with the credit card limits, you want the cash back. And uh, overall, if you want to stack up yeah. um, on cash before before the black, uh, black week or overall a Q4, just uh, contact us. So we will definitely help you out. So yeah, so talking about the budgets, uh, as I says, you asked me what the ad spend uh, regards the ad spend like how big you are going so if you're not having limits there uh then you should go aggressive as you can 
and everything will resolve basically in front of your face, in front of the Shopify dashboard. I mean, if you're seeing the return, then you scale. If you're seeing that somewhere you are stuck and you're burning money, so um, for example, if you scale up your budget to 30K daily, then maybe you need to stop or to that point because you maybe reach the point of the competition, the auction that you are not kind of um, able to kind of get through. And uh, so there goes Black Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you do Black Friday sale. And yeah. then and what it, happens after Cyber Monday, with the budget? So talking about the Cyber Monday, it's also a very huge thing. It is yeah. the last chance Cyber Monday where you kind of promote that uh, you are able to uh, to buy with this offer for the last chance. And uh, we kind of seen the trend that, yeah, the spend gets a bit, like gets downscaled a bit. But we kind of leave the Cyber Monday last chance ads for a week or two. Because people are still still buying and they see Christmas oh, shopping. Christmas shopping, yeah. They see the opportunities to buy things as a gift maybe, for the Christmas. Maybe you have something special for the Christmas shopping. Maybe you are launching some kind yeah. of ads. So near that, we, what do we do? We launch like Christmas shopping campaigns. And then you just basically uh, see the like everything in the performance. I mean, if the performance of the... Uh, if the performance of the last chance drops in the, I don't know, December 7th, you kind of turn them off and you push everything you can from the Christmas campaigns. And it's simple as that. I mean, till the December 16th, even f till the, I could say, December 21st, uh, if you have a very good uh, fulfillment center that is able to ship out, um, I don't know, that is able to ship out next day delivery which is very very unlikely during this period because every yeah. fulfillment center is um being fucked <laughs> and uh, they have a lot of like the capacity and the volume that they have in their centers are very huge so the postponements are really like yeah um, but like at the same time you can uh, you can use that in your your way uh, how you like because as an example if you have the standard shipping that takes one week you can raise the price of, let's say, one day shipping, express one, but at the same time change it to, let's say, three days in case of, you, you just uh, place the safety. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you raise the price of that shipping, you run the offer, people just spending more shipping price. Yeah. But, uh, okay, and uh, I believe we can close, um, close that topic. And uh, another one that is definitely important, especially... Uh, after COVID and all that mess, and uh, most importantly, after iOS updates. Yeah. So, what happens? Uh, how you are preparing for this year? What you are doing uh, differently uh, than the previous one? And overall, how can iOS uh, impact the Q4? Yeah. So, talking about the iOS. So, the thing is very simple. I mean, most probably you faced. A 20 to 30 percent lower performance in your marketing funnel because uh you're not cam you're not capturing all the all the visitors in the website so you just need to focus even more on collecting emails because yeah. via emails you do not have limits and uh, there's no restrictions and uh, basically if you will have as much emails as you can they, then then probably uh, like the VAP list and email campaigns will just pay off. Focus on the lead gen that will basically uh, be converted in during the direct direct to consumer marketing emails, SMS, uh, messenger uh, messenger messages even could be used. There are people that are using that. Yeah, and also like I, uh, yesterday I had a call, um, pretty good friend, uh, Brad, and uh, he mentioned that. Um, be always uploading your offline data uh, yeah. To the ad. yeah 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 offline data i mean sure uh yeah regards the is uploading your uh, customer uh offline data from the shopify or other platform that you are using into the business manager uh so um, that plus make sure <laughs> i mean you should probably uh, already be d uh, done that but make sure that you're using facebook uh Cappy conversion API uh, because uh, and if you're using Shopify it's very easy to do 
you just need to add Facebook as a sales channel uh, and just um, you'll be kind of impl you'll implement the uh, Facebook's conversion MPI in few actionable steps and everything will be shown the screen it's very easy no coding require required nothing plus the you could also use the attribution tools but we kind of are not seeing very we're not seeing a huge success there i mean especially uh, for high ticket products. yeah especially for the high ticket because there is no attribution tools in my environment that could still track as same as facebook uh, because Facebook also has one day view attribution window, which is during the Black Friday, it is kind of, uh, you're going to see a lot of conversions coming up from that there because still a lot of people, especially older audience, they're not clicking on the ads. They are just uh, like brand searching you on the Google when they see the ad um, because it's just way easier and they just have already that behavior in their uh, in their brain, yeah, it's basically to see an ad and then just search it in Google. So, so yeah. Okay, pretty good podcast. Uh, maybe you have uh, some more additional tips. I don't know in terms of creatives, uh, in terms of Google, maybe add something, or maybe just to summarize from your case, like what's the most important thing for the Black Friday and overall. Uh, after all this mess of iOS updates and COVID and all that. Yeah, so the mo like to summarize, uh, number one, you should be focusing on the warm audience and the lead gen. Um, and this uh, kind of results in doing a pre-media buying before the November, and you could do also pre-media buying during the start of the November, just getting as much acquisitions, uh, getting as much people uh, in your funnel as you can uh, so you have that you are sure that you have a big warm audience to sh like kind of show off the product to um, emails try to get as like as cheap as emails as you can and make sure that the volume like you are kind of are pot like able to generate a lot of them so this is uh this is the point what else? Uh, creatives, 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 creatives. Regards the creatives and the content, uh, a lot of people will be, uh, a lot of advertisers will be blasting a lot of different content. So you need to make sure that it is very hooky. It catches people attention because they. It's not only about the offer in the in the creative. It to it will also be kind of you'll be in the game of what kind of elements of the creative you are kind of using that and we i could say we're kind of good at it and what we are focusing like from the content and creative team perspective we focus them to think that it is relatable to their news feed and it is hooky at the same time and uh people like to make them feel that this is the organic content that they usually watch in the social media plus the quality of the content for example Many people will be using UGC content, but with the banner, just Black Friday, Black Week, early Black Friday sale, whatever. But the question then is the quality of that UGC. Is it converting? Is it not? And that's like the true, um, like the one of the main things that we're focusing on our creative thing, like writing the proper scripts for the actor, for the influencer, for maybe already existing customers that are willing to do the UGC for you in exchange of the reward. So yeah, like actually for content, uh, we could uh, speak for another two hours. Yeah, uh, because yeah. it's uh, definitely a topic for the Q4. But look, um, we have pretty good uh, vibes here. And I believe uh, uh, we should give out something from the audience. So yeah. Um, we wouldn't be able to help you out with full stack. Um, we are closed. We are working way too hard to to give something for free. But uh, look, uh, guys, if you need help with uh, creatives, um, go to candyforscale.com, uh, find a tab uh, Candy for Consulting. Uh, we will give out free consulting sessions with you. So. Just give, uh, just to open that tab, uh, put the code at 360 scale, and you will get a 100% discount on our consulting session. And uh, this is going to be about uh, content. Yeah, so, and the limit. 
the limit usage of the discount code it's 10 people so be yeah the, like we wouldn't spend <laughs> yeah. uh, all the pre black friday season to to consult you so yeah. use the code um and uh me or not or other team members strategists um they'll just help you out uh with content strategies and uh, it's completely for free and the value of of this uh this uh, consulting session is uh, 250 euros. So you're saving money, you're saving time. You just get uh, the full yeah. strategy of content completely for free. And uh, and yeah, just to uh, summarize, uh, it was um, a pleasure. It was a pretty good yeah. talk. Uh, a lot of different stuff uh, covered. And uh, I believe, uh, guys, like it's just uh, a matter of implementing stuff based on your brand. You just heard all um, all the tips and tricks and overall strategies to use. So make sure you are implementing them in the right way based on your target audience, based on your product, market, brand, overall, uh, everything. And um, I'm pretty sure that you'll be uh, successful. Yeah, I mean, imagine that Black Friday could basically change the status of your e-commerce project and it could could even change the life of the business owner uh, because Definitely. and to do that your project needs to be in a good hands and uh, and yeah so that's the summary I mean just look at the Black Friday as a possibility to kind of enter to the next stage of your business if you're not kind of doing that in the right way you're just missing out the chance and maybe you'll be even kind of um uh, doomed to wait for another black friday and uh yeah, time cost money uh and 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 yeah and then basically that's this yeah so no thanks for being here thanks for no running problem. Us through no problem mate and i uh, see you on another episode yeah you too likewise bye bye bye, bye guys <laughs>